This is the moment four men who are affiliated with Northside Nuam would go on a ride out to their quote rivals territory over in Southside Nuam and attempt to murder a man. Luckily he escaped but only a short while later the same group of people would spot 24 year old David Gomo and would stab him to death in Canning Town. But David wasn't a part of any gangs and he wasn't affiliated with any gang members let alone be a part of an ongoing feud. It seemed as if he was attacked purely on the basis of where he lived. The killers believed to have chosen him to send a message to their rivals. Canning Town for anyone who isn't aware is a part of Southside Nuam, but you see David had recently graduated with a marketing degree from South Bank University. It's thought he wanted to make something of himself and was a very ambitious person. He even worked for the NHS as a key worker at the time of his death, working in distributing PPE. But again, purely based on where he lived, he was targeted at random by Northside Nuam gang members. CGE to be a bit more specific, but there was a 17 year old boy who was from Telford in the West Midlands. What should be noted though is that none of the people involved in this situation actually lived in Newham while well, the addresses that they gave to police weren't located in Newham, which I do find interesting. They were all from London, again apart from that 17 year old, but they were from different parts. I previously spoke about the ongoing feud in Newham and how it started over a decade ago with the murder of Stephen Lewis. Since then, multiple people including children and people who have no ties to gang members have quite literally been murdered on the streets, David sadly being a part of that. But let's break down what exactly happened on that spring night. On the 26th of April 2020, 19 year old Mohamed Jaloy and David Toure, along with 23 year old Vajinai Kolobali and a 17 year old, armed themselves with knives and set out from a hotel in Forest Gate towards Canning Town in a stolen silver Dodge Caliber fitted with false plates. They had one purpose, to hunt a potential rival from Canning Town which they saw as enemy territory. Around an hour before David is attacked, the group came across another man who they chased, carrying their weapons in their hands but fortunately he managed to outrun the group. To this day, the man hasn't been identified and he hasn't came forward to police. CCTV from a bus that hasn't been given to the public then captured the car turning its lights off and stopping besides David close by to NHS Nightingale Hospital. He then turned to run as the doors to the vehicle opened. The attack itself was caught on CCTV. His girlfriend, who he was speaking to at the time, says that she heard a male voice ask, quote, where are you from before the phone call ended? After the attack, it's believed that David managed to get to his feet, believe it or not, and stumbled the short distance to his home where he bled to death in front of his family. But this wasn't the only death in the family because only a short while before David would go on to be stabbed, his father had sadly died after contracting coronavirus. David was stabbed just three days before his father was supposed to be laid to rest. He would go on to suffer catastrophic injuries, going on to be stabbed at least nine times. Some of the wounds were as deep as 2.5 centimeters and sliced into the bone. Either way, detectives from the Met Specialist Crime Command would quickly begin an investigation and the stolen car was found abandoned in Lincoln Road, less than a mile away from the scene of the fatal stabbing, after one of the wheels had came off. A pair of sunglasses were found on the back seat of the vehicle with DNA evidence linking them to Muhammad. Another pair of sunglasses were recovered from the scene of the attack and the 17 year old's DNA was found on the left arm. CCTV would also show all four defendants meeting up earlier that day, leaving the same hotel in Forest Gate and walking down the road where they had parked the stolen car the previous evening. The car itself is then captured numerous times on CCTV as it made its journey south towards Freemasons Road. During a search of David Torrey's address, a series of graphic drawings were located which appeared to depict the fatal stabbing. Describing these, the prosecution said that the detailed cartoon depicted the rideout and the brutal murder of David Goma. He continued, it could only have been drawn by someone who was present at the attack. 
Each image illustrated a different stage of the attack, beginning with four figures deciding to head to the quote op block, the South Newham Gang's territory. Prosecutor Oliver Glasgow read out a number of phrases written next to the drawings. Let's go to the op block. Let's jump in the ride. K is our driver. Let me raz this spliff. Let's hop out on these pagans. Clothing can be identified by make and style in the drawing and is similar to that worn by the four in CCTV footage from the night of the attack. In one image, a drawing of a figure can be seen lying on the ground in what is supposed to be a pool of blood. But after a six and a half week trial at the Old Bailey, all four were found guilty on murder charges and a further charge of conspiracy to cause grievous bodily harm. They're all expected to receive life sentences when they are to be sentenced at a later date. And so another person who has sadly gone on to lose their life as the result of this Northside Norm versus Southside Norm dispute. And it really does sadden me to see all these young people go on to lose their lives, especially the people who are innocent and have no ties to any gang whatsoever. David had literally just finished university and could have gone on to achieve greatness but unfortunately now his life has been taken away and on top of the pain the family must be going through again only a short while before David would go on to be stabbed to death his father would go on to lose his life because of the coronavirus. But I do want to take this time out just to send my condolences over to David's family and friends because it must be extremely hard within a short space of time to lose both the father of the family and the son. So again, I do just want to send my condolences over to them. But give the video a like for more crime related content like this and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's been me, Ape Hancho, and I'll see you in the next one.